Hi, I'm Yelena. I'm David. And this is our YouTube tutorial on vertigo. Vertigo. Vertigo and yoga, or how to practice while you have a vertigo. What's vertigo? Well, in like simple terms, it's when you get dizzy and you keep staying dizzy and that dizziness doesn't go away and it can stay around for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So it can have a bunch of different causes, mm -hmm. um, but basically when you have the symptoms of it, vertigo, it makes it very difficult to practice. It can make it very difficult. It makes to it really difficult to like move around and and like live your life in some way too. Yeah. Um, and as David was mentioning, vertigo can happen because there's like crystal that's stuck in the wrong part of your um, ear canal, which is so like crazy to me to think that like a little crystal in your body is gonna throw literally everything off. Um, it can happen due to the tension in the back of your neck, which I'll talk about in a second. It can happen due to a number of reasons, including uh, stress and lack of sleep. Being so, seriously hungover. Yes, but that one resolves itself really quickly after you've hydrated and uh, fueled your body properly. Um, it's a really, in some ways, a little bit of a mysterious disease too, or not disease. Is it a disease? A s um, uh, condition? Condition. Mm. That shows up. And there's still so much research going into it. And the reason why we are doing this video is that I suffer from vertigo from time to time. Have you ever had it? No. No. Uh, my longest episode was about four months. Um, and we get a lot of questions about this, and it's quite common, especially among women. Not sure exactly why that happens to be the case. Men get it too, everyone gets it, but it seems to affect women a little bit more. So we thought we'd do a short video um, on how to survive and manage and what you can do um, to, to be present with it. But this is not obviously a medical advice. I am talking about this from a deeply personal experience and I am just sharing what I've learned along the way. The moment you have vertigo and if it's staying and it's getting even worse, you need to seek uh, medical uh, advice. You need to see your doctor ASAP. Mm -hmm. um, the vertigo, uh, that I had and what made a huge difference was going to see my chiropractor. And it's actually funny because I shared about the vertigo and that it just wouldn't go away and that I was constantly spinning out. And then someone said, there's a type of vertigo that your chiropractor can relieve very simply. Mm -hmm. And so I went uh, and it's really gentle massages in the back of your neck. Uh, and just gentle, slow movements. And then within 48 hours, my vertigo was gone and it was caused by the tension in the back of the neck, which I suffer from due to a lot of traveling as well. <laughs> yeah, it got bad on, a, on an airplane. Yeah, it got bad when we were flying to Taipei. Mm -hmm. uh, it was my first, it was a very long flight and kind of sitting on the plane with my head pushed forward, created so much tension that that was the first time in my practice I did Utita Trikonasana uh, and I fell. I completely fell on the floor. Uh, and then for the duration of that week we were teaching, but I always had to hold on to the wall <laughs> as I moved around the room. So if you have vertigo, you're going to call your doctor and you're going to try and figure out what can you do in that context to uh, deal with it. But practicing was helpful. Um, and my doctor told me to actually practice. And then if it starts getting worse or the dizziness isn't stopping, then she would tell me, stop your practice then and there. So this way I could kind of every day test and check in and see what is happening. And then that also helped in the whole process of trying to figure out how to deal with it. 
The number one tip when practicing with vertigo is that you gotta keep your gaze fixed somewhere on the floor. So you are no longer turning your head, you're not even lifting the chin up or down, you're just really staying focused and you know, find like a little spot or even like put a line or put a marker, something on the floor and stay with it. It really helps stabilize your gaze and stabilize the way you move. And I told you this before too, these are some of my deepest, deepest practices I've ever had with vertigo. You have to be say, you have to stay so focused that, um, all of a sudden nothing else exists and you're just there being very, very mindful of the way you move and all of your attention is on that. So we thought we'd show you what sun salutation would look like. David's going to demonstrate because he's seen me do it so many times. You'll still have to tell me what to do. I'll, I'll try to uh, embody whatever it is you're describing. The, the vertigo, yeah. the dizziness. And then we can talk about a few other poses, but hopefully from just watching David do Sun Salutation A, you can understand that his head is doing very little movement or his gaze is very fixed. So here, I would now have found a spot somewhere on the floor a little bit ahead of me, and this is where I stay. So now as I start doing my Sun Salutation, as I do a come inhale, lifting the arms over my head, I actually don't change anything in my head. So this is the first position. And then as I start folding forward, I try to make no movement come from my neck. And now my gaze is following and I'm only going to fold forward as much as I can, making sure that I still stay connected to that little dot on the floor. And if I can, I fold. If not, I stay here. And then I would just do another inhale here without very much movement. And then do not jump. You're going to just step back nice and slow. Take as many breaths as you need as you do this. And then you lowering down to a chaturanga push-up position. Again, gaze fixed on the floor. As you go into inhale, upward dog, gaze stays down. And hold back. Don't, don't go for that full range of motion. Do not do any of this stuff. Really keeping the gaze down. And now this is, this is a, an important one. As I go back, or as David goes back into downward dog, he's going to keep the gaze there. So the head actually never drops. If David drops his head here and he had vertigo for real, the room would be spinning in all kinds of directions. So the gaze stays fixed there. And again, so you're kind of approximating the pose. It looks almost like it. And then you stay here, one, two, three, four, five. You don't have to stay long. You can even shorten. And then again, just reverse everything back. So do not jump, just stepping with a lot of control. And then exhale, just letting your torso fold a little bit. And then as you start coming back up very slowly and carefully, gaze stays fixed as the arms come above the head. And then exhale, hands by your side. So the movements are very slow, very intentional. You're constantly aware of everything, especially your head, your neck, and your sight. How was that? Uh, it was fine. Um, awkward? It's a little bit awkward because I'm not used to doing it that way. And, um, yeah. and there's like another, there's, you're kind of holding tension yeah. in your neck. So I could see that you don't want to go as far into some of the poses as you would usually go in that sense, like, you know, yeah. into the shape, um, like forward bending and the downward dog. I, I probably wouldn't hold it as long or be, be uh, super careful about where the spot you choose is. You know, I think closer to the hands makes more sense because I can look down at a spot on the floor and, and then as I go back, I don't have to look as far forward. Yeah. But if, if I'm starting in Samastiti and staring at a spot further ahead, I'm going to have to lift the chin yeah. quite a bit. So Maybe I wasn't clear on that. But when you're standing in Samastiti, so here I'm standing on my mat, my gaze would be right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I started with it a little too no. far forward. I think. It would be yeah. like literally just a little bit 
in front of my toes. Mm -hmm. So it almost feels like my head is down. One thing that helps is the life form mats, or if you have any mat that has little markings on it, that itself also makes a difference. But make sure you're not practicing on something like a carpet that has like a lot of patterns, because that's gonna, or a towel, if it has a lot of patterns, get rid of any of that stuff, like very simple, clean little things make a difference. And then, you know, you have to hold back. You're not going to do your whole practice, of course. The whole point is that you are still moving and kind of checking in and kind of burning some of that energy and connecting with yourself, but without trying to trigger your vertigo. You don't want to trigger it. If at any point you feel like you've triggered it, you can just simply stop for a second and try to regain ground or if you need to sit down of course you know what to do and then um, can we show Uttita Trikonasana too so let's say you're moving on to a practice so Uttita Trikonasana too this one you just have to be very careful when you're stepping to the side so if you need to take extra steps but even as I step the gaze is really fixed down and I move slow and then here now David's going to turn the right foot out but the gaze stays on the floor and it almost, it's like you're not going as much to the side as you are going forward and to the side. So there's a combination of both and the gaze stays on that point on the floor. At no point can you turn your head. This is the one that can really, really throw you off. Like this is, this was my first uh, big vertigo fall. Then one, two, three, four, five. And then again, coming back up, bending the knees, really feeling stable as you lift. And then same thing. And if you can see, David's moving much slower. Make sure you're breathing. Take all the extra breaths. Um, that's the part that matters most. And then same, slowly coming back up. And then we'll do B just for the sake of demonstration. So turning very slow. Anytime there's a turn involved, you really have to slow it down. And then folding again, finding a spot. The gaze stays down, so there's no movement happening here at all. And then, yeah. And then you would move through your practice with this kind of um, attitude or quality of deep, deep presence, awareness. Um, and even this, you know, for some days, this would be too fast for me. I would have to move much, much slower. I remember I would get to Tita Trikonasana and I'd be dripping in sweat because <laughs> I'm so contained in what I'm doing. Um, Utita Hasta could be same. Utita Hasta can be interesting where you can bend and again, my doctor told me that it's good to challenge your balance and to challenge the vertigo when you're having it, but in a very controlled way. And I think our practice, we're so aware, we know it. It gives us this baseline from which we can see all the differences, including when we're dealing with something as uh, dramatic as vertigo. So just bend the knees, bend the knee, bend both knees, and then just stay here. And just kind of mimic the movement, but challenge it a little bit as well. I even did back bends sometimes on a good day, keeping the chin more tucked in. Um, so as long as it's not being triggered, you just kind of keep going yeah, forward. You keep going. And I'm not sure why, but personally for me, the practice would help speed up the process of vertigo leaving the body, kind of uh, being free of it. Uh, maybe has something to do that throughout the rest of the day when I move with vertigo, I can't move from my head. I would have to use my whole torso. So if David was talking to me or calling me, I can't just turn my head. I have to turn this way. And so I think there's so much tension that builds up in the body if you're if you're dealing with it, that the practice itself helps you find a little bit more softness and tension can also be the cause of the vertigo. But make sure you see your doctor, talk to your doctor. One of the quickest things you can do is just book an appointment with your chiropractor and see if their treatment can help resolve it. And if not, then 
take other necessary steps to figure it out. Okay, was this helpful? I hope so. Um, please let us know. Comment and make sure to subscribe. And if there's something you want to know, uh, if there's a special condition, maybe we've had it. <laughs> and we can tell you what our experience was with it. We've taught, at this point, thousands of people. So um, yeah. you'd be surprised what you can practice with. Or if you have vertigo or have experience with it, also let us know what has helped you because we all read the comments. And so maybe something that was helpful to you will be helpful to someone else that's um, here. Okay, thanks for joining us.